Hello, hello, I'm Jamie and welcome to my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for joining me for a new video. I put a poll up on my Instagram stories the other day with three topics for my new YouTube video. Those were weekend getaways from Sydney, the downside of living abroad and fun facts about Australia. As you can see from the title, the weekend getaways got the most votes, but I'm sure I will talk about those other topics in my video soon as well. Remember when I started my YouTube channel, I was saying, no, I'm not gonna put too much pressure on it. I just wanna enjoy it. And here I am making a video every week. I have to say, I really enjoy Enjoy making these videos. I've been living abroad in Australia for over three years now and there are so many things that I have learned so I'm really happy that in this video series I can share all those experiences with you and I hope it can be helpful. Right now I'm just filming with my iPhone 11 Pro and it really works but maybe on the long term I want to look into buying a camera not only for making YouTube videos but also just for my photography. But I know myself I don't want it to be like an impulsive choice so I'm just gonna wait a little bit longer. Camera would also be better for storage because I just had to delete before recording this YouTube video I had to delete so many files on my phone I think I have 40,000 videos and photos which is crazy you have those people that are really organized and their phone is always empty and you have those people that the storage is just always full well I'm that person while I did this I just wanted to share a tip with you if you go to storage there's like videos photos but there's also a category that says other and it actually takes up a lot of your storage but you can easily delete that just looked it up on Google if you go to settings and then to Safari and you choose to clear your history and website data wow that was mind-blowing like the category other just disappeared. So that will save you a lot of storage. Let's get into today's topic. We can't get away from Sydney. Obviously we are still in lockdown, but I'm really hopeful things will get better soon. I'm excited to make this video so we can look forward to some travel again. Don't forget that Australia is huge and there are so many beautiful places to discover. All these weekend getaways are in the state New South Wales and are 30 minutes or a couple hours from Sydney. So the first one is Jervis Bay, a three hours drive south from Sydney and definitely one of my favorite places. I I stopped counting how many times I've been here. It's quite a touristic place, but it's so big that you can find a lot of quiet places as well. I have a lot of beautiful memories about this place. The first time we went with friends, we booked an Airbnb close to Himes Beach. Himes Beach is again a hotspot for a lot of tourists, but there's a reason why, because it has the most widest sand in whole Australia. You just have to see it for yourself. The water is crystal clear. It's absolutely stunning. Another time I did a van trip down the coast from Sydney to Jervis Bay. If you're in Australia, you definitely definitely need to do a van trip at least one time. Beautiful way to travel and I love the freedom that you can just go and stop whenever you want. The first one to stop is the Ball Hill Lookout Point in Stanwell Park. It's absolutely beautiful for sunrise, the views are amazing and there is a cafe as well to grab a coffee. Nearby you will find your next stop, the Sea Cliff Bridge. So there's a small car park on the bridge where you can park your car on the side of the road. The entrance is a little bit hidden but you will find a gap in the bushes where you find a path and that path will take you to the top which is a about 15 minutes just make sure to wear proper shoes and never go near the edge of course views from the lookout point to watch over the sea cliff bridge are absolutely amazing our next stop on the way to Jervis Bay was Kiama, a beautiful coastal town. It's known for the Kiama blowhole, so definitely check it out if you're there. There are also some nice rock pools and picnic areas, so a beautiful place to unwind. The last stop before Jervis Bay was Barrie, really nice town just to stroll around and visit some local shops. Also, don't forget to visit the Barrie Donut Van when you're there. The donuts are absolutely delicious. You don't want to miss out on this. And then we arrived in Jervis Bay, so we made sure to visit Himes Beach again, but also some other beaches like Greenfield Beach and Sharknet Beach. I also did a weekend camping trip in Jervis Bay to Honeymoon Bay. They have a campground over there that's only available in the weekends. It works on a first come first serve basis so definitely make sure to arrive early to get a spot. It's a basic campground and when I say basic I mean no proper toilets, no shower so you just have to put up your tent but it's so worth the experience. When we were there we were on the beach and the kangaroos were just hopping by. It was absolutely amazing. Can you tell how many times I've been to Jervis Bay I need to share one more experience with you because as a content creator I got invited for a two-night stay at the Cove in Jervis Bay I'm so grateful for that because it was absolutely a dream the Cove is located in the Boudoury National Park which is a beautiful national park to visit but you do have to pay a fee which is $13 for a two-day pass the accommodation is just absolutely beautiful we stayed in one of their cozy boat cabins but they also have glamping tents you will also love this accommodation because 
you will see the kangaroos just walking around and especially the little joeys are so cute. The only thing is to take enough food with you because there are no supermarkets nearby. It's also right next to the beach for an ocean dip or you can use their stand up paddle boards. The next weekend getaway is Port Stevens. I absolutely love this place as well. It's a three hours drive up north from Sydney. Actually the first time we went with public transport which is kind of okay. It's five hours. Once we arrived in Port Stevens the bus connections were really bad. It's not like Sydney. There are no Uber so I definitely recommend to go with a car instead of public transport. Some of my favorite things to do in Port Stevens is to explore the beautiful sand dunes and do some sandboarding in Anna Bay. To visit Zenith Beach, a beautiful beach and if you're lucky you can spot some dolphins here. Definitely make sure to visit Fingal Bay as well. It's a sand walk between the ocean that is absolutely beautiful. Food wise, there's not much because it's just a small coastal town. I do remember a cute lunch spot and that is called the Little Nell. A lot of people will visit the Shell Bay Country Club, which is perfect for pizza and cocktails. And last but not least, make sure to do a dolphin tour. Of course, it's not guaranteed that you will see dolphins. We only saw dolphins the last 15 minutes of our tour, but it's still totally worth it. The next weekend getaway is the Blue Mountains, only an hour drive from Sydney so you can also do this for a day trip. A lot of the times we went with public transport which is really easy. There are so many beautiful hikes that you can do in the Blue Mountains. Some of my favorite ones are visiting the famous Three Sisters. It's really a hot spot for a lot of tourists but the views are amazing. Another one is the Wentworth Falls. Waterfalls that you find on this hike are absolutely beautiful. Just with every hike make sure you bring enough water. Sometimes we didn't and you definitely need it especially when it's hot. Nearby the Wentworth Falls you will find Lincoln's Rock which is definitely worth a visit as well. Just be careful but you can sit down near the edge. The views are absolutely beautiful. And last but not least you definitely have to make sure to visit Hanging Rock. The views are beautiful as well and it's quite an easy hike to do because it's mostly just flat. The only thing is that there is a gap between two rocks. That's probably why it's called Hanging Rock. So to get to Hanging Rock you need to jump a gap of like 50 centimeters. I was panicking. I was like I'm not gonna do that. I would never risk my life for a photo. My partner he managed to do it. He said I can do it. It's easy. He got the beautiful photo. A lot of people get this photo but yeah just be careful. So these are probably more day trips but we have been to the Blue Mountains for a weekend as well. We've been to the place called Lura, a beautiful place and in my opinion the prettiest village in the Blue Mountains. We stayed at the Fairmont Resort if you're looking for a bit more luxury. You have everything there like the pool, you can have breakfast, lunch and dinner and it's only a 30 minutes walk from the center of Lura. I will put some links down below for some cute cafes and things to do in Lura. I will also do this for the other weekend getaways so hopefully you can find some inspiration. The next place is Palm Beach. I actually never been for a weekend only for day trips but I would definitely like to stay here for a weekend as well. So from Sydney Palm Beach is about an hour with the car or two and a half hours with public transport. Coming from a big city as Sydney the vibes in Palm Beach are just really relaxed. There are a lot of fun things to do in Palm Beach but definitely make sure to hike up the Barrenju Lighthouse. The views are absolutely beautiful and the hike isn't that hard. I really hope that once my parents will visit me again in Sydney I can show them this hike. And when you finish the hike you need a well-deserved meal definitely make sure to go to the boathouse for lunch so the next weekend getaway is an eight hour drive from sydney or a one and a half hour flight we made sure to book a flight a beautiful place byron bay I don't even know where to begin. Byron Bay is something special. When I'm in Sydney, I already feel like I'm back in time. Well, when I'm in Byron Bay, I feel like the time is just standing still. But I love it. I love the vintage and hippie vibe. It makes you feel so relaxed. There's a lot to see and to do in Byron Bay. So you can easily spend a longer weekend. We went there for five days. So some of my favorite things to do in Byron Bay is definitely to visit the Byron Bay Lighthouse. If you're lucky, you can even spot some dolphins and whales over here. You will find a lot of cute restaurants and cafes in Byron Bay. There's also one called Woods Bungalow which is a 50 minute drive from Byron Bay or you can go with public transport. Definitely worth a visit. Again I will put some links down below but definitely make sure to enjoy every sunset. They are just stunning over there. You can also rent a bike which is a really fun way to explore the area. Visit some beautiful beaches and last but not least make sure to do a kayak tour so you can spot some whales and dolphins up close. It's the next day I just got myself some tea because it's cold and wet outside. It's it's Thursday and 9 a.m. in the morning. I stopped filming yesterday and I think I have to realize that making a YouTube video actually takes longer 
then you think it's all right i'm just having a lot of fun creating these videos so let's continue we already talked about five weekend getaways that i experienced myself so now let's get into the five other destinations that i haven't been myself either number six is the hunter valley i haven't been myself but i heard so many good stories from people about this place there are possibilities to go with public transport from sydney but with the car it would be much easier to get around it's about a three hours drive and i also know they do bus tours for example if you're looking for a day trip hunter valley is really popular and one of australia's best wine region i personally don't drink a lot of wine maybe occasionally with a meal i like to drink a white wine but australia is so popular for their wine so i'm definitely interested to learn more about it so even if you're not a wine lover i think this is really still a fun place to go with friends to learn more about australian culture and to of course enjoy the beautiful vineyards the best time to visit the hunter valley would be during autumn as the weather would be better and there would be less rain this would be march until may the hunter valley is quite big and there are so many wine tastings that you can do so it's definitely important to book your wine tasting up front besides wine tasting you can also visit the markets in hunter valley or do some cooking classes something else that you could do what is definitely on my bucket list is a hot air balloon flight to watch the sunrise over the hunter valley i think that would be amazing so the next destination is port macquarie a four and a half hours drive up north from sydney it's a really relaxing place to unwind there are a lot of beautiful beaches and hikes that you can do there's also a lighthouse that you can visit and you will find them through whole australia because there are over 350 lighthouses in australia but to me they always have something special i feel like it's really part of australia you don't have many of them in the netherlands in the netherlands you will find more windmills i looked it up and there's also a koala hospital that you can visit in port macquarie for free of course it's always more fun to see them in the wild but i think the koala hospital is a really fun place to learn more about the koalas where they rescue and treat them koalas and kangaroos are just the cutest animals in australia so i would love to visit the next destination is long jetty and i heard a lot of good stories about this place from sydney it's only a one and a half hours drive up north so that's not too bad i actually had to look up what jetty means i have my laptop right over here so when i translate it in dutch i know what it means a jetty is a landing stage or small pier at which boats can dock if you didn't know already i hope you learned something today so the reason why it's called long jetty is because in this place you will find the longest jetty which is about 350 meters long and it will take you three hours to walk if i see the photos for sunset it's beautiful and definitely a place i want to visit again you will find beautiful beaches over here and great cafes and shops definitely a place worth visiting the next place is kangaroo valley again i've never been but i would love to go it's only a two hours drive south from sydney it's of course not guaranteed but you definitely have a good chance of seeing a lot of kangaroos over here it's more inland so there are no beaches but i live two minutes from the beach so i really find it nice to have a different environment sometimes and be in nature some of the things i would love to do in kangaroo valley is to rent a kayak to explore the waters and this place is well known for the fitzroy falls a place i would definitely visit the waterfall is 80 meters long so i think that will be really impressive i also just looked up some accommodations i will see if i can put some photos up here they look so cute all i want to do is pack my bag right now and just go next and last destination is seals rock a three and a half hours drive up north from sydney when i look this place up i immediately find this beautiful beach it's called number one beach absolutely stunning the water is crystal clear you will find me here all day there's also a beautiful rainforest called wellingut national park there are so many beaches as well but this might be a good option to change things up a little bit and of course there is a beautiful lighthouse to visit again for sunset there's even an accommodation called sea rocks lighthouse cottage that looks absolutely amazing it's really popular so it might be booked out really quickly but definitely worth a try and those were all the 10 weekend getaways sure with you but going through all these places make me so excited for my next trip really hope this can help you to plan your next weekend getaway if you have any questions or if you have been to any of these places yourself and you have some more recommendations please put them in the comments down below as i would love to hear them thanks so much for watching i really really appreciate you if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for my next videos and then i will see you in my next video Bye. Or how to say it in Australia. Cheers.